Today I will show you an action, thriller film from 2020, titled Unhinged. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's a particularly rainy night and the man is seen sitting in his pickup. He's obviously troubled. First, he takes his wedding band off and throws it away, lights a match and then gets out of the car, with a gas canister and a hammer in his hand. Breaching the house doors, he alerts the inhabitants that run toward him, only to be violently taken down. He pours gas all over the house and lights it on fire. As he drives away, the house blows up. Rachel is sleeping on the sofa and gets woken up by Andy, her lawyer and best friend. He tells her that her soon-to-be ex-husband wants her house and that they should file an objection. She cuts the conversation short when her son comes in and tells her that she should get dressed or they'll be late. The son, Kyle, is in the dining room with his uncle Fred, who's talking to his elderly mother. The violent attack from earlier is being mentioned on the news, saying the man was the woman's ex-husband with a history of substance abuse and violence. Fred and Kyle talk as Rachel searches for her candy cane scissors. Fred's girlfriend joins them on the table and they talk about their financial problems, particularly about their mother's nursing home cost. She leaves with Kyle and they get in their terribly old car. They end up stuck in traffic and argue about taking the freeway. The mom decides to do it, even though her son protests, saying they're going to be late. While driving, she gets a call from her husband and the kid picks up, happy to talk to his father. He's disappointed almost immediately when his father cancels their plans to go to a game, as the mom tries to lessen the blow. To make matters worse, they still end up in a traffic jam on the freeway and his mom gets another call, this time from a client. When she can't lie herself out of the situation, and the client realizes she'll be late again, Rachel gets fired. The son teases her a little bit to cheer her up, then suggests they take the next exit from the freeway and go trough the service streets. Coming out of the freeway they stop on a red light behind a gray pickup. When the pickup doesn't move as the light changes, she starts honking and drives around him. On the next light, he pulls up next to their car. It's the man that set the house on fire. He asks them to roll their windows down and Kyle does it. Rachel and the man have an awkward back and forth, with him patronizing her and then apologizing, expecting her to do the same. But, she snaps back at him disagreeing. He gets rattled and angrier, threatening her that she will find out what a bad day really means. Kyle is scared and asks her to go. The man starts following them and cuts them off, twice. Rachel takes another route and manages to get Kyle to school very late. She calls Andy and asks him to meet her for breakfast in 20 minutes, promising not to be late, even though she's low on gas. Rachel stops at a gas station, sets the pump and goes inside to get a few other things. When she goes to the cashier to pay, she sees the gray pickup parked behind her car. Worried, she tells the cashier and a guy standing in line next to her that the man in the pickup has been following her after an argument. The guy says he'll walk her out and get his plates. As she fuels the tank and gets in the car, the guy tells her the man's plates. She drives off and then the guy stays behind telling the man in the pickup not to follow. Suddenly, the man rams him over into the street and he gets hit by a second car, while the pickup continues to chase after Rachel. She tries to loose him on the way, but they get stuck in a traffic jam again, with him right behind her. He rams in her car over and over, but no one reacts. They start driving again and Rachel can't find her phone to call for help. The man pulls up next to her and shows her that he has her phone. She drives off, causing an accident on the way and almost running over a woman, thinking she finally lost him. She pulls up into a parking lot to hide and calm her nerves. Meanwhile, Andy is waiting for Rachel in a diner, calling her, but getting only voicemail. The man with the pickup walks in and heads straight for Andy. He lies to him and says he's an old friend of Rachel's, then sits down and chats him up. They talk about scary experiences with road rage and about Rachel's divorce. The man is defending her soon-to-be ex-husband and Andy gets uncomfortable, so the man lies and says he could get Rachel on the phone. Andy tells him to try and gives him his own phone. Back at the parking lot, Rachel is looking for her tablet when she suddenly hears ringing. She finds a phone and picks up even though it's not her phone. The man gives Andy his cell phone and he tells her that he's waiting for her in the diner with an old fiend of hers. She says she doesn't know anyone by the name given. Andy turns the phone over to the man the moment she starts talking about him, calling him a psycho, explaining what happened. He tells her that she needs to truly apologize to him in person, which alerts Andy that something isn't right and he asks for his phone back. That's the moment when the man hits Andy with a cup, breaking his nose. Everyone in the diner gets upset, but no one helps when the man slams his head on the table, knocking him out. He puts Rachel on speaker and continues to talk to her, asking if Andy is really just her lawyer and friend, or if she's cheating on her husband with him, just like his own wife did. 
He tells Rachel to say her last words to Andy as he chokes him and eventually stabs him, while the people in the diner still do nothing, except film the situation. As the man is walking out of the diner, he tells Rachel that Andy is dead. She tries to plead with him and apologizes, but the man doesn't believe her and speeds away. The man calls her again from her own phone and starts reciting all the messages she's gotten, including one from her son's school. He starts toying with her and asking her to choose who he should kill next from her contact list. When she refuses, he sends all her money to her husband and threatens to go after her mom and to burn her house down. Rachel chooses herself, but he doesn't accept and asks for another name. She chooses the name of the client that fired her. He hangs up and Rachel immediately calls the police. They arrive at the house of her client, but the man isn't there. Back at the house, Fred is watching what happened in the diner on the news. There's a strange noise coming from the other room and his girlfriend doesn't respond to his calls. He goes to check on her and on the way he sees the pickup parked before the house. The noises continue and he follows them with a knife on hand. The man appears, holding his beaten up girlfriend and telling him about what happened with Rachel. He says he feels insignificant and that the only thing he has left is violence and revenge. So he kills Fred's girlfriend and then sends Rachel a photo of him with her brother. The man calls her again and she tells him she called the police, which he already knows. He checks the tracker on Rachel's phone, sees that she's in front of Kyle's school and tells her that she has three minutes to pick him up and drive away, or he'll kill Fred. He tells Fred to write her a letter, blaming her for his girlfriend's death, all the while pouring gasoline on him. Meanwhile, Rachel gets her son out of school. As they're driving away she calls the man back, telling him she has Kyle. The man tells her to put him on speaker or he'll light her brother on fire. He makes Fred read the letter he wrote, saying Rachel is responsible for everything that has happened and that he'll never see another sunrise again. Suddenly a police officer walks into the house and the man hides behind Fred. He lights Fred on fire and runs, but the cop shoots him in the shoulder. Rachel can hear everything happening on the phone. She stops the car and breaks down. As Kyle tries to comfort her, the phone rings again. It's the man, telling her Fred is dead. He threatens Kyle, but she threatens him back done with all of his garbage and smashes the phone. Her and Kyle get in the car and head to the police station. On the way there they realize that he might be tracking them with Rachel's tablet. Kyle finds it tapped beneath her seat and wants to throw it out the window, but Rachel has the idea to track the man with the tablet, like he tracked them before. Kyle realizes that he's right in front of them, having stolen her neighbor's van. They see a police car in front as well and Rachel tells Kyle to put his seatbelt on, pulling up on the side of the van, headed straight to the police car. Kyle tries to get the cop's attention, but the man figures out what they're doing and rams the police car, causing a massive car crash. He keeps following them and catching up. Kyle calls the police from the tablet, but they tell them that they can't do anything to help. The tablet runs out of battery and they are left on their own. Rachel decides to go to her mother's house, where the neighborhood is just complicated enough to slow the man down a little. She speeds up and he follows, causing car crashes on the way. She manages to trick him and lose him for a moment, just long enough to get to her mother's house and let Kyle inside. When he gets there, he activates the panic button on the alarm, then gets a flashlight and hides upstairs in a secret compartment. Meanwhile, the man is riding around in the neighborhood, looking for them. He sees the car and stops to take his meds and gather himself. Suddenly Rachel rams into him with another car. She walks up to his car, but he grabs and pins her to the ground. He tells her that she'll always remember him and what she could have done to save her boy. With Rachel down, he goes after Kyle in the house, calling for him, lying it's the police. The kid makes a noise and Rachel appears in the hiding spot, but so does the man. They fight, with the man going after Kyle constantly and Rachel relentlessly attacking him so he can't get to him. He knocks her over and starts strangling her son, but she finds her candy cane scissors and stabs him, finally killing him. The police eventually arrive at the house. Rachel and Kyle are approached by the police officer that found Fred and he tells her that he's still alive. They drive toward the hospital to see him, making sure they don't anger anyone else on their way there. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.